What does the church teach about sexual morality? From a basic biological perspective, sex is the act of procreation. As a genuine human act, sex should also be an expression of a loving gift of self. This much was established in the previous episode. Now, for sex to be an actual expression of that gift of self, a few things must be taken into consideration. A gift has two essential characteristics. A gift is forever, and a gift is given completely. When I ignore these characteristics of a gift in human sexuality, I destroy the actual meaning of the sexual act as an expression of self-giving. That means, first of all, sex cannot be a genuine expression of self-giving if I do not intend to stay together with the other person, if there is some expiration date on our relationship, a one-night stand, an affair, a temporary relationship, or a let's-just-give-it-a-try kind of thing destroys the meaning of sex as an expression of self-giving. Sex has its proper place in a relationship where we take this giving yourself forever seriously and really mean it. In what type of relationship is this the case? Well, in marriage, because when I get married, I solemnly promise before God and the people that I will love, honor, and cherish the other all the days of my life. I make a firm commitment that I want to give myself forever, and that is why sex belongs properly in marriage. Second, a gift is given completely. For sex, this means I have to give myself as I am, as a man or woman, with my masculinity or femininity. This includes my fertility, which is part of me as a biological being. Procreation is not the only meaning of human sexuality, but it is there in the very nature of the sexual act. And if I purposefully destroy my fertility, the sexual act can no longer be an expression of giving myself completely. This is the reason why the church rejects artificial contraception. Artificial contraceptives destroy the meaning of the sexual act as a true gift of self, and therefore sex would no longer be an authentic expression of giving yourself. Artificial contraception is consequently ruled out by the church. Now, are there other methods of family planning? There are different, in fact, also modern, methods of natural family planning. These methods seek to determine a woman's fertile and infertile days. Should the love of the spouse or the children provide serious grounds for avoiding the conception of another child, the use of natural family planning is morally acceptable. The difference between natural family planning and artificial contraception lies in the fact that in using natural family planning, human fertility and the wholeness of the human person are not destroyed, but rather respected as they are. Okay, so much for that subject. Now, there are, of course, other topics connected to sexuality. But if we have understood the basic argument of the nature of sex as both a biological and a human act, then we will also understand the Church's teaching on masturbation, pornography, and homosexual acts. The Church weighs all of these things in light of the true meaning of the sexual act. Human sexuality is not simply about quieting some urge or satisfying a drive, but rather this act has a human and personal dimension. Sex is meant to express one's gift of self. Whenever this is ignored, we actually destroy love and ultimately the dignity of the human person.